As a small state and highly digitalized country, Estonia does not have a luxury of ignoring or underestimating what's happening in a cyberspace. We know that cyber attacks are becoming more and more stronger weapons of stealing money, influencing our democratic system, and of course also bringing so much confusion to our entire society. In a country where 99% of services are working and are accessible fully online, we cannot afford to have mistakes in our cyberspace. And cybersecurity has to be integrated to all life cycles of communication. But how does Estonia prepare for different attacks? And yes, you can prepare for different attacks. And what's the infrastructure behind there? This is exactly what we are going to discuss here today with me. My name is Annette Numa, and I'm working as a Digital Transformation Advisor at the Estonia Briefing Centre. So to get it started, first we have to have a look of how our entire infrastructure has been built and how this supports our entire infrastructure and security aspects here. From the security perspective, Estonian information security relies on a three pillars. First of all, data confidentiality. Secondly, data availability. And last, integrity. All of these three pillars are very, very essential and very important. And if you think there that you can take any of these pillars away, it can drastically influence your entire security society. So I wouldn't really recommend to do that way. But starting with the first one, first of all, confidentiality part. Estonia provides its citizens a chance to identify themselves by using the electronic ID card solution. But that's not the only solution that we provide. There is also a mobile ID solution, smart ID solution, and also e-residency solution. All of these solutions are coming with a very secure pin codes, and every of your move will be encrypted and timestamped, and is also trackable later. Moving on to the second one, availability. As we know, in order to securely exchange data between different agencies, and of course also different private institutions, the x serves the basis of secure data exchange platform that makes uh, public and private databases to have 100% reliable information every time of the day. And last but not least, the integrity sign, which remains very, very important as well. So the integrity is essential to maintain the trustworthiness of data um, that we see, and, and of course also to avoid all the kind of illegal loss and duplication and manipulation with data. So that means that nobody, not even hackers or uh, different kind of system administrators, and not even the government, they can't manipulate with data and get away with this. This is what, why we use the key SI uh, blockchain for. But with the, these uh, three pillars in place, we are offering our, our secure digital services that serve 100% interest of our entire nation. And to move on here, I already brought it out, the Exode system. Now, when we think about the very large number of different data exchanges between different government servers, we have to make sure that this is 100% efficient, and of course, also the safety has to be always provided. In Estonia, we are using a solution called Ixte since the year of 2001. It's an open source data exchange layer that is fully decentralized and also distributed. You might want to ask, why can't you store information just in one single cloud or database? I'm going to tell you why. Because that's not secure or stable. We think that when we, when we actually uh, try to also uh, decentralize the information, then this, every time that these different government agencies or institutions are exchanging our information, it's fully timestamped and encrypted. And that makes the data exchange much more secure. Also, the Xroad interconnects the public and private databases which are held in a distributed manner. And the access to information is very, very limited. So that means that unauthorized organizations can't get access to our information. And they have to sign mutual agreements from both of the sites. And of course, also from both of the institution sides, there is a security layer always in place that makes sure that this uh, agreement is 100% always also valid. But as you can see by the numbers, last year, Estonia had 1.4 billion transactions between different agencies. If you think about this number, 
1.4 billion. Estonian population is 1.3 million. So you can just imagine how many transactions per one person this exode is able to do. And 97% of the cases, these transactions are fully automized. So besides the security aspect, this is also a very efficient and, and fast system. And we are not the only ones who are using this system. There are a couple of other countries that also have already exported the same technology to bring out some. Finland, Iceland, Fur Island, Ukraine and Namibia. But of course, we are currently testing it out and piloting this in many other countries. And maybe you are going to be the next one. And now to also talk about uh, with, uh, with, with also um, the entire just like the competence side here. With a solid investment to our cybersecurity infrastructure, Estonia has developed extensive expertise in this area. And we are becoming one of the strongest and most recognized and valued international cybersecurity experts. Have you heard that the usual data breach, uh, discovering this data breach, would take around seven months in a word? Do you want to know how fast that happens in Estonia? Thanks to our key SI blockchain technology, we can discover these things instantly. And in the year of 2007, I guess many of you have already heard, we were facing the first a very large and, and so far the largest cyber attack. But that, that was, of course, also a wonderful lesson for every one of us here. And since Estonia is a small country, as I brought it out in the very beginning, it is extremely important to distribute this risk concerning the data. There could be cases of emergency, of leak of data. We need to have a backup plan for, for that kind of cases. And our backup plan is called Data Embassy. Our first data embassy, where we have backed up our information outside of our territory, our own territory, is based in Luxembourg. You might ask, why? Why Luxembourg? There are many reasons for that. First of all, Luxembourg has a very great infrastructure. They have a great competence. They have been Estonian very big friends and partners since the early days. And of course, they're politically very stable place where we could have this, this data embassy. And now, just talk about the cyber governance side. Besides a very great infrastructure, a state needs to have clear understanding of responsibilities and distribution of these responsibilities. To be clear, to understand which government institution is responsible for which exact action. To cover some. The Estonian Information System Authority is home for our CERT EE department. And a department who is responsible also for monitoring all the network and solving cyber crimes incidents, coordinating also the safe implementation of IT infrastructure. And most importantly, they are also responsible for raising the awareness of cybersecurity. But that's also just one institution where we also have to report our incidents. And Estonian telecommunication providers and also our critical infrastructure providers are always required to report about cases, and this is happening by the law. But luckily, we see more and more companies, private companies, also informing and reporting about these cyber crimes because they want to help others and get some support from the state point of view for, for these kind of cases. We also have the police and border guard board. And uh, there is a cybercrime unit who also works in cooperation with many international partners to detect and, of course, also investigate the cyber incidents that have some way affected our citizens. If you think about the war, I think this is very clear um, that wars these days are happening much more often on cyberspace than on crowns. So I, I would say that our... Um, I brought our armed forces are never able to protect us in cyberspace. That's why we needed to also have cyber forces. Uh, we have Cyber Defense League, which involves professionals, uh, volunteers in national cybersecurity, and also Cyber Command, which supports cyber competence in the defense structure and is also officially a part of Estonian Defense Forces. Things might be great and internally, but one thing is sure that cyber attacks know no borders. So we are more and more dependent on international space, cyberspace. If our aim is to make sure that our cyberspace is safe, secure, stable, 
then cybercrime should have a similar consequences than any other crime. Therefore, I think it's very essential to have the clear understanding how international law applies in cyberspace. Surprisingly, today there is no clear or concrete agreement which laws apply in a case of cyber attack. Should there be consequences such as sanctions, travel bans or something else? I think we should figure it out all together. Estonia already created Tallinn Manual, which was created between the year of 2009 and 2004. And Tallinn Manual was created by the invitation of NATO CCDCOE Center. The Tallinn Manual 2.0, which was created now in 2017, is the most uh, exhaustive uh, analysis of how existing international law applies in our cyberspace. Therefore, Estonia now also as being a non-permanent member of United Nations Security Council since the year 2020, has also suggested to create this common framework where we would have the concrete consequences, what would be the steps following. And Estonia is also home for two very important organizations that deal with cybersecurity, and these are NATO, CCD, COE, and also European Union, ID agency. We will continuously also organize different conferences, cyber exercises on a global level, and different hackathons to get more people involved in the sector and, of course, create some new ideas that can also be helpful for us for making our cyberspace more secure. And now, to sum it up my presentation, the lessons we have learned in our cyberspace. First, cybersecurity always needs attention. You can never stop investing to cybersecurity because hackers otherwise are going to be one step ahead of you. So we will recommend to everyone to keep investing and making sure that this is one of our biggest focuses. And also security starts from the lowest level. So that's why all of you are responsible uh, for making sure that our cyberspace is safe. Not just the ministries, but all of you. So we have been organizing very successful campaigns to raise awareness. Um, and, and of course, also even campaigns on TV so to make sure that all of our citizens are aware of the risk. And of course, one thing is also very important. Transparency works. Your citizens need to understand and trust you. And last note that I want all of you to remember is that all of this success story in a cyberspace have been possible because we have been working very closely together with our private ICT companies. There are more than 100 companies who invest their time, money and effort to our cyberspace. And today, you're going to be lucky enough to hear three presentations from these companies. So I hope you're going to enjoy. Uh, the rest of the conference here, and I wish you a very pleasant day. Well, uh, Annette, thank you so much for your overview, and I think you, you touched on many important points. Um, we got uh, several questions from you, the audience, as well. Uh, and just a kind reminder, uh, we still have the poll one running, so if you want to share your own opinion with us, please do so. The first question from the audience is, what makes Estonian cybersecurity infrastructure special in comparison to other countries? Um, as I also mentioned in my, in my presentation side, so definitely uh, our infrastructure by basing it on three pillars. Because um, we have been thinking through every single step, starting with the uh, citizen's point of view, um, that they have to be able to identify themselves in a secure way, and then moving on to data exchange platforms, and then also using different technologies to make sure that our data has been stored very, very securely. So we're not just relying on one thing, it's, exactly. it's a whole ecosystem approach, absolutely. Um, the second question is, uh, what can each of us do to improve and strengthen cybersecurity, in your opinion? Um, again, it's everyone's responsibility um, to be more aware th of the risks. This is the first, uh, first thing that we need to know. There are many, many exercises, and also one of our companies who are going to be talking here today, Cybexer, they are or also organizing different kind of exercises for, uh, for companies, for students, and so on. Mm. So we have to take that serious, because this is um, the risk that we're facing every single day when you're receiving emails or logging into your systems. We have to be aware of, of what kind of risks we might be facing. So I think um, that's where the focus should go. Uh, 
Um, absolutely. Uh, also, yeah, you touched on the on the issue of, of cyber hygiene. If we teach our kids regular hygiene, why not teach them the cyber hygiene as well? Uh, the last question is uh, getting a bit more technical. Um, would it not be better to use a private cloud uh, considering data redundancies? Uh, I wouldn't agree on that because I'm a true believer of, of uh, decentralization. Because uh, when we think about also in a, in a point of view of citizens that this is much more also uh, has more customer like uh, experience that side there or just like serves this kind of friendly customer experience to the citizens so that um, they would they would know where they would have to also uh, store their information or submit their information and, and, and especially if this is decentralized then it, it really much also uh, tries to avoid this kind of risk of, of including all the information just in one single point so um, I, I think Estonia has chosen a very uh, good way to go there. Mm -hmm.